the Alps, a fascinating world in the heart of Europe. 40 mountain peaks over 4,000 meters above sea level form the magnificent panorama of the Walliser Alps. In the center stands the Weisshorn, the White Pyramid, with its three equally proportioned but rugged and challenging flanks. Many mountain climbers dream of conquering this evenly shaped peak. Three narrow ridges lead the way up to the summit, over 4,500 meters above sea level. The majestic summit, crowned with eternal glacial ice, is a silent witness of centuries past. Years have come and gone. Still, it dares to defy the effects of time. And yet, the future of its white crown and glaciers is uncertain. of freedom and adventure, a place of longing and of peace, peace between heaven and earth. The ascent to the cross on the summit of the mountain is also an inward journey. Only with the heart can you see clearly. Simon and Samuel Anthemotten come from Zermatt. Both brothers are extreme athletes, and as professional mountain guides, they make a living from their passion for the mountains. You picture the whole tour in your mind's eye, visualizing where the most critical stages of the climb will be. You go through everything one last time in your head. You often feel a greater sense of awe during the preparation of a tour as opposed to when you actually get going. Once you're out there and can analyze the situation, it's easier to make decisions and adjustments depending on the location. All alone since the early hours of the morning, the two skiers have been making their way to the 3,700 meter high Chalet Pass. The blazing morning sun transforms the white snow-covered landscape into a breathtaking world of color. In the silence of this chilly alpine morning, Simon and Samuel feel at home. As they commence their first downhill run of the day, the sight of the untouched slopes before them makes their spirits soar. Life in the mountains has left its mark on the brothers since their childhood. When you grow up in the mountains, you also become drawn to the mountains. You can compare it with someone who grew up near the sea. We grew up here. It's a good chance to become a mountain guide or a mountain climber. Practice makes perfect. The Anthematons took up mountaineering as a profession, and together they lead extreme mountain tours all over the world. Mutual trust is the most important thing. My brother and I are very similar. We were carved from the same block of wood, so to speak. We can trust each other completely. We don't need to talk much because we understand each other so well. 
and, and Goethe by actually a good mountain uh, climber sets high goals. If you have high goals, you can't always reach all of them. You've got to be honest with yourself. If things sometimes don't work out and you find yourself on the wrong track, you should abort the hike, turn back and learn from your mistakes. That's one of the most important lessons in the mountains, to learn from your mistakes. For me, the real thrill of mountain climbing or off-piste skiing is the suspense. Can we do it or not? Will we reach the summit or not? You only know for sure when it's all over. A rope team like the one Simon and I have is based on trust. One of us can follow the other without a second thought, knowing that the other one has everything under control. That's why we can accomplish such fantastic downhill runs. Simon and Samuel love a challenge. Whether it's a high altitude first time ascent or an extremely steep downhill run, they're constantly aware of the risks involved. You always need a guardian angel. Whether you're skiing or hiking in the mountains, you need him. But you also need common sense. You need to ask yourself lots of questions like, what are the conditions like? Can I do it? Can the equipment take the strain? But when it is all said and done, there's someone there helping you, protecting you. When you're in the mountains, you can feel a special energy. Lots of people call it God, others call it something else. When you find yourself on particularly steep terrain, you always feel tense. You need full concentration. Then the terrain levels off, you're overcome with a sense of freedom as the tension releases. And then you can let yourself go and enjoy skiing with nice, wide turns. It's almost like flying, like being in harmony with the rock. It's early in the morning, and mountain guide Bruno Jelk is accompanied by Susanna Zurbrug and Sylvia Eulen. They are on their way to the Bishorn, a 4,000 meter high mountain, popular for ski tours. The mountains awaken a longing in me. Even in my childhood, they fascinated me, especially the snow-capped mountains. As a child, I used to think, one day I want to climb these mountains. I still feel that way. The yearning is definitely there. I've always been a mountain person. I grew up in the mountains. They've always fascinated me. I need to have the mountains around me, 
Only then do I feel comfortable. The closer I am to the mountains, the better I feel. I love solitude, peace, silence. The best place to find these is in the mountains. What I really enjoy is when you're climbing and getting closer to the ridge. With every step, you see more mountains. With every step, the panorama opens up. It's absolutely fascinating. Two and a half hours later, they arrive at the Bishorn summit, 4,153 meters above sea level. That's the climax. When you reach the summit, it's a wonderful feeling. You can see far and wide. You've overcome the difficulties. It's hard to put into words. It's a moment that triggers deep and wonderful emotions inside me. On the other hand, you know you've only reached halfway and you've got to get down again. You shouldn't forget that. But even so, after a challenging ascent, arriving at the summit is a wonderful moment. Bruno Jelk has been head of the rescue operations team at Zermatt for many years. No one knows these mountains better than he does. That's the north ridge of the Weisshorn. The hike starts at the Tragui hut. One of the routes passes along here, over the Bishorn. You could also take the route below and come up here to the pass, but that route is more difficult. The first part of the hike takes you over the ridge, and then you keep to the left of the Gendarm, go over to the sunny side, and then up the snowy ridge behind. When you view the north ridge from the Bishorn, Weisshorn looks very imposing and awe-inspiring, and also very difficult. It's almost like the points of a needle. You somehow feel challenged to do the hike. Do you think we can manage it? You're pretty fit, so it shouldn't be a problem. The Weisshorn. 4,506 meters above sea level is often called the White Pyramid because of its three equally proportioned flanks. Many mountain climbers dream of climbing this peak. So do Sylvia and Susanna. But for today, they'll climb down to the ski depot and then enjoy the long downhill run. I love skiing. It's absolutely fantastic. It makes me shout for joy. It triggers so many emotions inside me. Their next stop is the Trakwi Hut, which is also the starting point for the hike, which goes over the north ridge of the Weisshorn.
While winter still holds the lofty mountain peaks firmly in its grip, here on the Tash Alp, spring has come. Susanna and Sylvia are training hard to improve their fitness. They need to be in good shape to be able to take on the hike on the Weisshorn. I don't consider training as hard work. For me, it's a welcome change from my daily routine. I can give my thoughts free reign. After an hour's training, I go home soaked in sweat, but happy. Water is a precious commodity in Vallis. Despite the many mountain streams and rivers, the valley is well known for its dry climate. Here in Vallis, the spring sunshine awakens the budding trees in the forest, which covers the mountain slopes to a height of 2,200 meters. The larches and Swiss pine trees serve as a protective barrier, vital for sustaining life in the inhabited regions of the valley. The forest provides the mountain inhabitants with the necessary building materials for their barns and for their houses built in the traditional Vallis style and which are typical of the region. Living in harmony with nature, farming and taking care of the landscape, this is how the people have lived for centuries. This majestic alpine world, life in all its splendor, the power of creation down to the tiniest plant are simply marvelous to behold. Randa in the Matterhorn Valley. Life in this Vallis mountain village is marked by the towering peaks of the Weisshorn and the Dom. For centuries, people have lived here with the mighty power of nature. Not only did the landslide of 1991 leave its mark on the landscape, but also on Isidor Branchen, a fourth generation farmer and mountain guide. I was born in Randa and grew up here. A large percentage of the residents lived from farming until tourism began to develop. And with tourism, the mountain guide profession was initiated. Even our grandfathers worked as mountain guides during the summer and then lived from livestock farming in the winter. This village has survived many catastrophes, avalanches, rock slides. Once a glacial slide wiped out half the village. We are surrounded here by mountains which are 4,000 meters high. In other words, we live in the deepest valley of the Alps. The first rock slide took place at 7 or half past 7 in the morning. It wasn't very serious. It produced an enormous cloud of dust which covered the village. But then, three weeks later, Later, we had the second rock slide. That one was much worse. A huge section of rock broke away from the mountain. The whole valley turned pitch black. Everything shook like in an earthquake. We were afraid. We thought maybe the world was coming to an end. When you consider that a small village with about 30 buildings used to be down there, and they all disappeared overnight, it makes you stop and think. Über Nacht ist das alles verschwunden und das äh, macht dem uns schon Gedanken. Yes, it definitely left a lasting impression on the people. Solidarity in the community has been strengthened. We still remember the catastrophe and that's what makes the villagers stick together all the more.
It's departure day for the Weisshorn Summit Tour. Three rope teams make their way up the three routes on the ridges toward the meeting point, the cross on the summit. The two brothers, Simon and Samuel Anthematen, have been employed as guides. Susanna Zurbrug and Simon set off to climb the difficult but beautiful Chalet Ridge. Having scaled the Chalet Peaks, they make their way toward the bivouac hut at the Chalet Pass, about 3,800 meters high. The route up to the bivouac from Zermatt is long and somewhat dangerous due to the many loose boulders on the ridge. The bivouac hut is our first stop. You can rest here and prepare for the following day. Yes, and in your head you can go through everything that happened so far. Did everything go well? What does tomorrow have in store for us? There is room for up to eight people in the bivouac hut. Though space is very limited, the climbers can cook and rest for a few hours. The Weisshorn Hut is the stopover point for the tour going over the East Ridge. Lucius Kuster has worked as the hut's warden in the summertime for the past 43 years. It's all thanks to my parents. They always used to drive us to Randa during our holidays. I grew up with the villagers here. I've been coming here since my childhood, year in and year out, and now I just keep coming back. But only because I enjoy it, not because I have to, not at all. There is sleeping room for 30 people. For over a hundred years, mountain climbers have spent the night here before climbing the East Ridge. Isidor Branchen knows the Weisshorn better than anyone else. He has climbed it 100 times. At 1.30 in the morning, he'll make his way up the Weisshorn once again. His guest is Pastor Hans-Jörg Kagi. Never in his life has he ever stood on a summit this high. On summit day, various things preoccupy me. But the crucial question is, will I make it? It's a mixture of trust and fear. I'm really glad that I have a mountain guide with me that keeps me calm because I know that someone is leading me. Otherwise, I would panic. I can't stop anyone from going, but it's a long and difficult hike. It's very challenging. His hours of work are often long and his nights are short. And yet Lucius has experienced unforgettable moments in this alpine world. Yes, I have a few pets, for example, ibexes. When you go out of the hut in the morning, you see them dart off. It's great. And bearded vultures circling overhead. the guests have been attended to, the warden can finally get a bit of rest. At night, when all the guests are sleeping, before I go to bed, I'm alone with the stars, with nature. It's wonderful. It's something you have to experience for yourself. And if it's God's will and there's a full moon, there is nothing more beautiful to behold. Then later, when the sun rises, it's unique every time. When the light starts to change color, it seems like a paradise, paradise on earth. Then you forget everything around you. I can't understand why there are wars in this world. It's so incomprehensible. 
For me, there is only one thing that matters. The best thing of all is being up here. At night, before a difficult tour, it's hard to fall into a deep sleep. In the morning, your first glance is at the sky. You see the stars. Will the weather be good? The mountain often seems more threatening at night. We start off early. You do tend to feel a bit tense. Will I make it? Will we find the route? What are the difficult passages? Which are the most crucial points in the climb? Will we make it to the top or will we have to turn back? We have a lot of questions, but there is also a sense of joy and anticipation as we finally get going. It's six o'clock when they set off after a quick breakfast. Between the Chalet Pass and the Weisshorn summit, there are 700 vertical meters to overcome. It's one of the great rewarding ridge tours, writes mountain guide Hermann Biener in his guidebook containing a selection of tours in the Vallis Alps. Isidore Branchen and his guest Hans-Jürg Kagi already climbed from the Weisshorn hut over the East Ridge hours ago, step by step through snow and ice. I've always found it fascinating to take risks and to climb as high as this. Even as a child, I thought it must be quite fascinating to climb a peak like this one, simply because it isn't easy. It often takes all my energy and all my strength to do this climb. As I hike through these long, snowy passages, my thoughts run free and an overwhelming sense of gratitude comes over me. Every step I take gives me a good feeling. I can see that I'm making progress, that we don't have to stop or turn back, but that we're going up. With every meter that lies behind me, I feel calmer as we approach our goal. Sylvia Eulen has also set off with Samuel Anthematen to ascend the North Ridge. They have already arrived at the Grand Gendarme. This impressive tower of rocks is visible from afar. It's the last major obstacle the climbers will have to overcome. For me as a mountain guide, the crucial point of the climb is the North Ridge of the Gendarm. It is important which movements I make, which path I choose. You can't deviate from the route. My guest has to trust me completely, because all he can see is the overhanging wall, and he thinks it's impossible to climb. But trust is only possible when I communicate with my guest, and when we have contact with each other through the rope. 
The North Ridge is one of the most beautiful ridges. It has several facets, and depending on the conditions, it can be impossible to climb. But even so, it is stunningly beautiful. We are moving along at a height of over 4,000 meters, but the rock is clean and compact. Climbing up here is very interesting. On the East Ridge, Isidore and Hans Jörg have reached the Snow and Ice Ridge and are ascending further in ideal snow conditions, step by step towards their goal. If the snow is of poor quality or the ice is smooth, one slip could cause both climbers to plummet into the depths. You always feel a sense of awe because even on an easy hike you could get injured. You can't give in to fear because you need to be sure of yourself. Of course, there will be moments when the situation gets tricky. Then you have to do your best to master it. You can't afford to doubt yourself. Even mountain climbers sometimes struggle with fear. I only know one remedy for fear. Don't look down, don't look back, keep looking up. I feel safe when I know that I am secured to the rope. If I fail, I can trust that instead of me pulling him down, he will keep me from falling. Meanwhile, Simon and Susanna have been making good progress on the Chalet Ridge. I'm aware that when I climb a mountain, I'm also exposing myself to danger. There's always an element of risk involved. Even with the best training and preparation, you need to come to terms with this fact. When I get to a difficult spot, I stay focused. I concentrate on the rock and myself, nothing else. And I use all my skills so that I can review my situation in detail. Am I well secured? Will the rope hold? Is everything in order? It's as if I'm in a bubble. I keep my mind entirely fixed on what I'm doing. When difficulties arise, you need to stop for a moment and think about what to do next. You need to make decisions, especially when you arrive at a crucial point in the climb. Perhaps even whisper a quick prayer, Lord, show me the way. That gives me the assurance I need. with a mountain guide is also a good experience. I see the rope disappear, then I lose sight of Simon, and yet I know that I'm connected to him. When he calls, I can go. I know that he'll hold me if I fall. He keeps me safe. For me, this is an illustration of life, which is also like a tour. There are steep cliffs which make you afraid and cause you to become paralyzed with fear. But when I'm connected to God, I don't fall into the abyss.
Sylvia and Samuel on the North Ridge. Watch out for those loose rocks. The crucial point at the gendarme is behind them, and Samuel guides his guests safely toward the short descent to the plateau. Choosing the right route when crossing over the snow and ice ridge is particularly important. We were born in Zermatt and have been really influenced by our jobs as professional mountain guides. When I'm moving along the ridge and I know my partner is happy, it makes me feel good. It's one of the most satisfying moments for me. When I'm with a mountain guide, it's important for him to guide me safely. But to avoid him getting stressed, I also do my best to proceed with caution. Ultimately, my trust is in God. Everyone needs a guardian angel. But at the end of the day, you also need to follow your instincts and use the experience you have to make sure you are safe. Yes, we'll make it. Isidore and Hans Jörg are getting closer to their goal as they make their way over the East Ridge. The moment I see the summit, my heart begins to beat faster. I know that we'll make it. We're almost there. I can't take my eyes off the cross on the summit. It begins to fascinate me. At the same moment, Samuel and Sylvia reach the summit via the North Ridge. Having secured his guest to the cross, the mountain guide enjoys a moment of relief. His guest is safe. They have reached their goal. Similarly, Simon and Susanna have climbed the Shali Ridge and have reached the summit. It's such a wonderful moment when all three rope teams approach the cross. That's the climax. We've reached our goal. And this breathtaking view. I can't put it into words. It's such a satisfying experience. On the summit, the horizon stretches out into the distance, high above everyday life, a moment of wonder, of gratitude, and of reverence. The meaning of the cross is important for me. It is the symbol that Jesus Christ brought heaven and earth together. He wants to go along the ridge of life with us and bring us to our final destination. He gives us hope that death doesn't have the last word. He is the Lord of life who has overcome death.
encounter at the Summit Cross, a place of peace between heaven and earth.